We're driving a Tesla Model S Plaid. Coming up, we're gonna halt as a family. But first, information explosion. Ah! <laughs> If you looked in the information explosion, um, all of that information was current as of when we made this video in November of 2022. But man, Tesla changes things quickly, so I don't know if that's current. I also need to thank my buddy Richard. Uh, he owns this vehicle because Tesla doesn't have a PR department and they don't have press cards. You're very interesting when you let somebody borrow your Honda Civic. When you hand off the key card to your Model S Plaid, oh, that's a <laughs> special kind of friendship. Thank you, Richard. Let's begin our review with interior. It's weird in here. Everything is different. There's this enormous screen and it feels like there's not enough stuff to work the car. Not even a drive selector. You've got a little part that comes up here on the side. So if you want to go forward, you slide forward. If you want to go back, you can go back and then you've got the auto park button there. And it's predictive too. So when you pull into a spot, it tells you, uh, oh, you want to go backwards? Tap the brake. Cool like it just did there. You probably want to go forward, easy peasy. This works better than I would have expected. But as far as the interior is concerned, I mean, you've got the carbon fiber elements to remind you you're driving the fast one. It doesn't scream luxury to me. Yeah, the primary thing isn't luxury, but it definitely is special. That's a great way to put it. It's a very special feeling vehicle. Though if you poke around, you can find some spots where kind of the classic Tesla um, fit and finish issues do pop up. This does look like a video game. Here, we're gonna do something that we don't normally do in cars. I'm gonna tap and activate, and now we've got it in full self-driving mode. And as you look on there, it shows you all the cars that are around, how many lanes there are. You see how it notices the green lights and everything? Oh, that's so cool. It is super cool. You also have to have constant vigilance because this is not autonomy. That doesn't exist yet. But it looks that way. Yeah, but it sure does look that way. <laughs> I think what makes Tesla's interface so good is that you get so much feedback. You see what the car is seeing. Like, okay, there's a car coming up behind my left. And there it is, right there on the screen. What this does is it gives you confidence, but what you want is to not be so confident that you trust it implicitly because it is not perfect, but it is very cool. 12.3 inch display there, 17 inch display here. And in the previous Model S's we've driven, it's been a vertically oriented display. This is horizontal. Um, they have a, a tilt option where you can actually rotate the screen uh, to passenger or driver. And then there's an eight inch screen in back for kiddo. More than any other vehicle I've ever driven, uh, Tesla's and this Model S in particular are so fun to occupy. There's so much dumb <laughs> in here. Can we talk about farts, guys? <laughs> Do you want to show them? Sweetie. <laughs> and in you such a special it. review, too. No, it was me. <gasps> oh, was it? It was you. This is the kind of stuff that is so <laughs> stupid and wonderful if you are driving a Model S as a family. Like, stupid? Or fun. We have a seven-year-old. Stupid is fun. <laughs> you can set up a light show, which is really cool. You can uh, turn on a fire uh, if you Ooh. want to do that. You can stream stuff from YouTube, your favorite YouTubers. Um, you can watch all sorts of different entertainment. When you get in the Model S, and especially the Plaid, you think it's just all about hauling it. But also, it's just really fun. It feels like you're driving a toy. <laughs> I think we are. As you explore the interior, there's all sorts of small storage here and there. There's plenty of cargo space, 25 cubic feet in the back. There's an underfloor storage area. You've got the frunk up front. This is a very practical car with so many places to hide your stuff. And then in terms of uh, human space, um, I think we fit very comfortably up front here. Uh, in fact, I'm enjoying the seat comfort. Uh, it's fitting me very well. I do feel like maybe a little bit more lateral support in the shoulder area would be nice uh, considering how capable this is in the corners. But uh, if you move to the back seat, uh, very, very comfortable space, plenty of headroom, lots of leg room. If you move to the middle position, you have a flat floor. And also, I'm going to note that all of the seats are heated, even the middle position, which is a real rarity. I'm using the uh, turn signal buttons, and I'm still not convinced that's better than a stock. Kiddo, how is it getting in and out of this car? I just want to say it's pretty easy to get in and out. Okay. Uh, uh, what about if you're making fart noises? Does that make it even easier? <laughs> that was all me. <laughs> 
And what about getting the child seat in and out? This looks like the kind of vehicle where it might be difficult, but <laughs> yeah. it was really simple. There's like a bolster piece that moves out of the way, and then you can latch in the latch points. Easy, Easy to install. As far as safety is concerned, there's the uh, full roster of safety features, automatic emergency braking, um, lane keeping assist, that kind of stuff. Overall though, family, what do we think? Is this Tesla Model S plaid family friendly? Yay! Fun and family friendly. Oh, yeah. Rear window test. Almost all the way down. Armrest test. Okay, driving in a, I don't have an eight and four, driving in a left and right position, uh, my elbows do land pretty squarely on the armrest. They're um, plenty yielding and uh, I find them to be very, very comfortable. I'm gonna go like 95% inboard, 90% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family? If so, you're always welcome to subscribe. Style! I want to very quickly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eye Sunglasses. This is fun because I wear these in the helicopter. They are made for aviators because these thin temples fit underneath headsets very, very easily, and it's very, very lightweight, all day comfortable if you're a working pilot. Wonderful in the aircraft, but also wonderful in the real world, and this is weird because I've got a yoke here, so this is about <laughs> the most aviation-oriented car I'm ever going to drive. But they work great in your normal life. Eddie wears them. Surprise! These are also Flying Eyes, and they with these removable magnetic tinted lenses so they double as sunglasses. If you would appreciate aviation grade eyewear, whether you fly or you drive like you fly, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MICA to save 10% on flying eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did a review with the Model S for Kelly Blue Book. Oh, I a really long time ago. So the same basic shape endures, but they've updated it over the years. But the Model S Plaid has some cues that say, hey, you can go to I'm driving a Plaid. You got those wider fenders, you've got the carbon fiber rear lip, rear diffuser, the unique hood, you've got unique fascias um, that set it apart from a standard Model S. I like how distinct it is. Like from very far away, you know, oh, that's a Tesla. Mm -hmm. My one complaint is that uh, they only sell the Tesla Model S in only five colors, which means the odds of seeing another one very, very similar or exactly like yours is pretty high. I'll bet there's an extra high level of people who get wrapped for their Model S's. Mm. If you could wrap your Model S in any color, what would it be? And also, I'd be curious to hear, do you guys like the look of the Tesla Model S? If so, if no, tell us in the comments section. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always give us a follow over on Instagram, in motion. Here we are driving around in a very, very fast, quick, capable car. I think it's very comfortable. We're driving on the smaller wheels. They offer 21s and this does not have that. But I think this is a very livable car. And of course we can go in here and we can uh, change our modes a little bit. So here we are in comfort mode. This is true to form, very comfortable. I love all the information they give you here. Let's put it in sport mode. That certainly firms it up a little bit. In our drive, we're not going to be doing anything too, too crazy because this is a borrowed car. But we've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Uh, so uh, plenty of grip available. And I'm also a fan of the regenerative braking. As I come off the accelerator here, uh, you get plenty of regen. And let's see how smoothly it comes to a complete stop. Is it smooth? Is it mica smooth? Whoa, that was so smooth. Kiddo's right, that's mica smooth. I feel like I should trademark that. <laughs> you know what? What's that? I kind of wish we owned this. <gasps> Oh my gosh, Ooh. that's a pretty strong endorsement. My kiddo wishes we owned this car and we haven't even done the coolest thing yet. Uh, kiddo, can you put your head on the headrest? Ready? Count me down, kiddo. Three, two, one. Three, two. Ah! <laughs> oh, stop! Okay, let's all take a big, deep breath. <laughs> Okay. Wow, because it was intense, and then it got more intense. <laughs> Kiddo, I gotta ask, after um, doing that uh, quick acceleration, do you want to own this more or less? More? Okay. <laughs> can I point out something funny to you guys? What? That's not as fast as it can go. Oh my gosh. There is a drag strip mode. Drag strip mode. Right now it's conditioning for peak performance. It's calculating, and a little later in the video, we're gonna try out drag strip mode. 
I am, uh, oh gosh, U-turns with this uh, yoke situation. Ooh. Okay, here's the time where we talk about the yoke. If I were driving an open wheel formula car, this should be fine because I wouldn't have to do the hand over hand. But when you're doing a U-turn, this really is a less functional way to steer. I understand why it's like this. I understand that when I double tap this and I turn on full self-driving, that it's just gonna do its thing. Oh, you don't have to drive the thing. Why would you have a full steering wheel? Because it's not a, a, a fully autonomous vehicle. Can you get used to it? Yes. Is it better? No. If you think it's better, tell us why in the comments. I, I bet they will. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I do not think the yoke is an improvement over a wheel, I understand why they did it. Specificity is the core to character. This makes this completely different than any other vehicle you're going to drive, and that makes it feel special. You know what it is? It's that I've done um, enough performance on-camera driving where you have to um, counter steer and catch a steering wheel um, when you're sliding a car. <laughs> <laughs> Catching this in the right spot is very, very difficult. I learned how to shuffle steer at the Bobby Orr Stunt Driving School, and this is counter to all of that training. Maybe I'm a special use case, but again, not better than a wheel. I understand why it's here. Okay, I've talked enough. I'm curious though, what does everybody think about the Model S Plaid? Sweetie's at the wheel, we're doing 12, 13 miles an hour. Who wants to see a Tesla Model S driven sensibly? <laughs> well, you're gonna have your opportunity right now. This thing is built for speed, but also um, normal people might drive it too. Uh, how, That's true. How's the visibility? Better than I might expect. This thick B pillar is kind of in my way, but I'm 5'2", so I sit a lot closer to the steering wheel than others. Mm -hmm. Let's go out and take a right, and I wanna know, how do you, f I know. <laughs> You went for the stock because I you've did. got decades of experience. Push that the button. One? There you go. Okay. Also, this is very strange. It's really intimidating because everything is so different. Like the anxiety that I might have to do something in here while also steering with this thing. Let's try something here. To the extent you're comfortable, feel free to press the accelerator and see how it feels. Okay, I'm going to get in a straight line first. Oh boy. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you feel there? Terror, it, but also like a weird sense of power. Oh, we've <laughs> seen you evolve over the years of doing these videos, and now you're going to be... Um, a little more Micah. <laughs> eh, no, we don't need that. We're good. Um, you're a fan of EVs, right? Yes, I am. I just like being in something where they've rethought everything, and this definitely falls into that category, but because I've only been in it, a few hours, it's really overwhelming. But are you at least intrigued? Yes, definitely. Sweetie's yes. intrigued, okay. I think that's pretty darn good. I'm gonna get back in the driver's seat. Hey, so we all survived Evy driving the Model S Plaid. I think the bottom line is that there is so much fun here, and I understand why somebody would want to uh, spend their money on this kind of thing. Hey, uh, should I smoke that Camry? <laughs> Real quick, I want to thank everybody who supports us, people who leave kind comments, people who give us a thumbs up, maybe it's supporting us on Patreon, maybe it's uh, using that thanks button down below. However you support us, if you choose to support us, thank you. Thank you. All right, onward to emotion factor. I think you can frame the emotion factor probably however you want because there's so much to dig into here. That is true. Oh, there's a lot of layers to it. There's the silly things like the fart mode and the games. There's you want to do well by the environment and you choose to drive an electric vehicle. There's an exclusivity. There's the high performance. There's the um, ongoing uh, updatability of it. The Which is exciting. The deep customizability so you can truly make it your own. I've been reviewing cars long enough that a lot of people thought that when electric cars came along that there would be no uh, more emotion in vehicles. And I think the Model S, especially in plaid version, 100% disproves that notion. This is a very emotive car. If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Tesla Model S of your very own, I'm guessing you're going to need to sell your current car first. If you'd like to see what your current car is worth or how much you should spend on your upcoming Tesla Model S, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Heading onward to remarks. 
Remark number one, infotainment. We kind of already covered the screens, but sweetie, how do you find using this whole interface? I am not technologically inclined, so I think it would take me a little while to actually figure out everything you can do here. With familiarity, all of those options, I think could lead to a lot of fun. I agree. One of my perpetual complaints, though, has been the fact that um, there is no availability of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in here, and we've gotten very used to using the same interface from our phone in our car. So if you're married to CarPlay or Android Auto, then uh, this is a, a suboptimal choice. Oh good family, look uh, what we got in the screen there. Drag strip mode, peak performance is ready. So um, like most launch controls, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm gonna hold down with my left foot on the brake and now I'm gonna apply the right and look, it's doing a thing here where it's actually lowering the nose, getting into cheetah stance and when it says go, we're gonna go and uh, heads against headrests. It's still preparing for launch. It's a long preparation, ready to launch in three, two, one. No, <laughs> oh my gosh, and the graphics there are so cool. Um, can I do that one Do you want to do that one more time? <laughs> Sweetie, for the sake of your child, will you do it one more time? I have an idea. What's your idea? What if I get out and film you guys? That way I don't have to experience and you get to see it from the outside. That sounds like a, a great idea. Oh, that's an amazing idea. Yeah, that is an amazing <laughs> idea. Good luck, you guys. Okay, ready, set, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Can we do that one more time on the way back? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I'll add that if you go on uh, Tesla's website, they say that it'll do zero to 60 in 1.99 seconds. That's actually based on using VHT, which is um, a, a compound that you put on a drag strip to give more traction, plus they exclude one foot of rollout. Basically, you can achieve that potentially, but it really depends on how you're crunching the numbers. And yet, it does not matter how quickly this thing goes zero to 60 by the numbers. How it feels, it, well, how's it feel, sweetie? <laughs> it's plenty, it's good, I'm it's, good. It's fast. It, <laughs> need be no faster. I will quickly add that um, the brakes might be large enough for the street, but if you look at some of the track performance videos where people have taken their plaid there, might not be big enough for the track. Hold on. Sorry about your car, Speedy Jeff. As for charging, the Model S Plaid will charge at a max rate of 250 kilowatts. Um, from what I've seen, uh, the, about an 80% charge in 40 minutes is what you can expect. Tesla says you can get 200 miles of range in 15 minutes. According to the EPA, you can charge overnight in about eight hours. And here are the EPA numbers for range estimates. Sweetie? Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? You sure can. Cool. Our trim recommendation is based on which trim gives you the features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. My trim recommendation is the base Model S, $109,490, and that is fine. It has all the things that make Teslas great. It has access to the supercharger network. It is a gimmick-filled infotainment screen, and at no point have I ever thought, ah, that Model S is too slow. As far as competitors are concerned, we've got stupid fast EVs, things like the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, the Lucid Air, and maybe the Audi e-tron GT, but honestly, the Tesla Model S Plaid's speed to price ratio makes it very hard to top. I'll add that if you go on the NHTSA website, that um, the Model S has a fair number of recalls. That's not uh, saying it's a terrible vehicle, but it's also worth noting. Hey, did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Tesla Model S Plaid, it is cool, it is quick, it is massive overkill for anything we could possibly need. To me, it is the nuclear-powered blender of uh, electric sedans. That's cool, but do you need that? <laughs> the answer is no, but it's okay to want it. Family, I think we've done a good job driving and surviving the Model S Plaid. May I have a five? Two videos. And a five? Pew! And you can get your high five. Ah!